My name's Erica, and I'm reading too many books. Hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm Erica, and I appreciate you being here. It is already the middle of June, and I am reading too many books. <laughs> I am currently reading six books at the moment, when generally I, I want to do like a max of three books at a time. So clearly, I my mission right now is to wrap up three of these books as soon as possible so that I can make it more manageable for myself. I know this, there's so many people who can just read a bunch of books at once, but really that's not me. I, I really only prefer to do a, a small number of books at a time so I can really focus on what's going on in the ones that I'm in. But this perfect storm of circumstance has all come together, but that's okay. We're gonna get through it. What we're gonna do in this video today, I'm gonna talk about some of the books that I've read, like finished so far this month. Then I'm gonna talk about the books that I am currently reading. And then we're gonna open up uh, some packages, although I do have two that the packages are already open because the packages got kind of weird in transit with the delivery companies but we'll take a look at those. So I do have chapters in this video. Feel free to look at the chapters if you wanna jump around, by all means. I'm gonna just start out by talking about the books that I have 100% finished so far this month. First book I finished this month, it was literally the first book I finished <laughs> in the month of June, was Queen of Shadows. This is the fourth full novel in the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. I'm doing a reading vlog for all of the books in this series, so I did post that video already. I will put a link down in the description here if you want to go check it out, because I can't really talk too much about this in this video without giving away some spoilers. So I can say if you're not familiar with Throne of Glass, it's a YA fantasy series about our main character. She's raised to be an assassin. She's very good at it and she lives under like an oppressive an oppressive king's rule right it, as so many fantasy books do and so we see her over the course of the series discovering more about herself and maybe kind of trying to do a little light treason the just a, what's what's a little light treason between friends, right? As George Bluth taught us, just light treason, just light. I, I did enjoy this book the best so far out of the series. Uh, like I said, I, I, had, I read the prequel novellas. I read them actually as a prequel before I even started the books. So this was full book number four for me. Definitely, I feel like this was the strongest entry into the series so far. The other books that I read in the series previously, this author seems to be able to start out with a really interesting plot, you know, plot set up a set of circumstances that she presents and you're like, oh, this is going to be like a really interesting story. And then invariably the middle of the book lags some things happen where you're like, what is what is even going on? I don't really think this even makes sense. Before finally, at the end of the book, pulling everything together to deliver a pretty satisfying ending. And for the previous novels before this, that has been basically what's happened every single time. This book, though, I felt like it was pretty strongly consistent all the way through, uh, which I was really, really happy about because this is the biggest book so far. And so I was pretty actually, I was actually pretty entertained by this one. And I was pretty pleased that the author was able to, you could see, I think her growth as a writer by the time she got around to writing this one, I felt like the middle of this book was much stronger than the middle of her other books. It felt like there was consistent plot, consistent action. I wasn't bored during this one. So overall, for sure I would say my just based on my pure enjoyment of this one I liked this the best uh, as I said I will link down to my video I have a whole playlist of the the videos in the series that I'm doing for Throne of Glass feel free to check it out if you want more on my thoughts I also finished I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter which I will put the cover up here because it was a book that I borrowed from the library 
This is a YA novel. It's an exceptionally well done novel though for any, like being any age group. Just, you know, if you're not a person who normally reads YA, I don't read a ton of YA either. This one, the writing I thought was extremely well done. The characters that were in this book were really sympathetic and relatable for anyone who's ever been a teenager. I think you're gonna think back if you're no longer a teenager and be like, man, I could really see that. We follow our main character, Julia. I'm gonna apologize ahead of time. I don't speak Spanish, so I'm really trying to get that that J, that Spanish J correct. I'm trying, I apologize for any Spanish speakers out there. We follow our main character who is 15 years old when the when the story starts and her sister, her older sister who was in her early 20s has just died in a tragic accident. So Julia is now kind of trying to hold her family together. It's now just her and her parents. Uh, she is a first generation child of parents who immigrated from Mexico. And so she's, you know, she's grown up in kind of competing cultural cultural settings because, you know, she is obviously, she's growing up in the U.S. She lives in Chicago. That's where her family is. And yet her family is also very strongly rooted in their Mexican traditions. So she's always felt like she grew up in her sister's shadow. Her sister was always seen as the perfect daughter. Her sister still lived at home. Her sister was very focused on school and working and doing things to be responsible, helping around the home, uh, you know, taking care of her parents, just generally being a, you know, a good child. Whereas our main character is much more focused on things that she wants to do. You know, she wants to go out into the world, see the world, travel beyond Chicago. She really hasn't been too many places before. She wants to see what else is out there. She wants to go to school somewhere else. You know, she wants to be able to focus on her career and not like focus on staying home. So our, we see our main character really struggling with feeling like she doesn't live up to the expectations that are set, you know, set for her by her family. And this is just kind of compounded after her sister's sudden death because we see too, you know, now that like the perfect sister has died, there will never be an opportunity for her older sister to be anything but perfect, right? Because she's dead. So now not only is it focusing on the thing what she was like when she was alive but i think so many so many people when someone passes away we have a tendency to kind of idolize you know the version of the person that we loved when they were alive so we really see our main character struggling to come to terms with the expectations put on her from her family competing with what she wants for herself feelings of inadequacy unworthiness, feelings like she doesn't really belong anywhere. I think that this book is probably going to be relatable pretty much universally because a lot of the feelings that our main character struggles with are feelings that I think almost every teenager struggles with, right? Like trying to figure out who you are, trying to find your place in the world and feeling like nobody really understands you, nobody really pays too much attention, you know, to, to what you're doing and maybe the kind of attention you get is not really the kind of attention that you want. I feel like that's a pretty common experience for teenagers to have. And like I said, even if you're not someone that normally reads YA, which I don't read that much YA, I think it was an extremely well done book that is worth a read. And then the a book that I just finished and it kind of turned into a resentful finishing of this book for me was All Good People Here. This is like a suspense mystery that is extremely heavily based on the Jean Benet Ramsey case, which I'm sure probably all of you watching this are familiar with Jean Benet Ramsey. At least if you're from the US, you're probably familiar with it. Uh, for anyone watching who's not familiar with Jean Benet Ramsey, it was Jean Benet was a little girl in the mid 90s who 
was initially missing very briefly, but uh, was found deceased pretty much immediately. You know, there were signs of assault and the case has never been solved. There's been some really heavy scrutiny of her family over the years you know, speculation that one of her parents or her brother are the ones that are the one that killed her. But there's never been any, any, any closure to this case, just a lot of theory about what might have happened to Jean Bonnet. So this book, you could tell was extremely heavily based on that case. And I had not heard of this author before I before I opened this book, I just I've seen quite a few people mentioning this book and it it had a pretty pretty heavy wait list at my library so it seems to be a popular like a popular suspense mystery so I was like you know I'm always on I'm always on the hunt for a good one but apparently this author runs an extremely popular true crime podcast it was easy to see and saying that it's based on the Jean Bonnet case trust me that's not given any spoilers in this one because you've pretty much immediately you if you have any if you've even like remotely heard of the Jean Monnet case you're going to connect those dots pretty much immediately I ended up unfortunately really disliking this book it a lot of the decisions that were made by the characters in this book didn't make sense and not in the way where you're watching these things unfold and eventually it will make sense when you get to the end and we get the explanation right of what happened no no it it was it was just a bunch of behavior and actions and things that the characters would say that like made no sense and that was like never resolved. So uh, I don't think it was intentional on the part of the author because if it if it were intentional, I would think that it would be addressed like by the end of the book, uh, you know, the inconsistencies, but it wasn't. So what I also noticed about a lot of the writing, there was just way too many convenient coincidences to help our main character out. And an example that I, I made note of while I was reading this because it was something that I noticed happening like over and over in this book. We've got our main character and she's investigating investigating the case, right? The, the little girl, the murders of the little girl, or the murder of the little girl. Um, so she's going around doing an investigation and at one point she suspects uh, another character so she's going to different people asking questions about this other character right and each person she's talking to totally independently of each other maybe some of them like haven't spoken to each other in like a couple decades right so it's not like they can they're getting together to collude you know and match up their stories our main character is talking to these people about let's say character b and Every single person she talks to says basically the same exact thing about character B. And I mean the same exact thing. <laughs> I'm like, the odds that each person you speak to about this other character, the odds each person you speak to is going to say the same exact thing is so low. And it just, it really broke the immersion for me. It was very bizarre. You could tell that this author wanted you to take everything in this book seriously. Like this was not a satire. This was not campy. This was supposed to be at least, look, at least this was my interpretation. This author wanted me to be, to follow along in this investigation as though it were a real life investigation but the way that it was delivered was not realistically believable so I couldn't buy in. I debated several times DNFing this book and honestly having finished it I wish I would have. <laughs> I wish that I would have. At, at the 50% mark I almost put it down. I almost did but it was going so fast and on, when I was done I actually I took a look at the some of the Goodreads reviews as I do when I read a book that I feel kind of like controversial about and one person 
in, a lot of people shared my same my same observations about you know the people who didn't like it a lot of us had the same thoughts about why we didn't like it but one person said you know perfectly like basically they just did a speed read through a lot of the book and honestly that's exactly the point where I got to as well at the 50% mark I just instead of DNFing it which sometimes I make this decision if I'm debating like all right I'm either going to have to put this book down completely in DNF or I'm just going to have to speed read the rest of it because I'm not going to invest like a couple more hours in this book that I'm not enjoying <laughs> but I was curious to see how the author would allow like the Jean but like which Jean Benet theory the author was going with right to wrap it to wrap it up so I just I did a speed run through the second half of the book and I didn't feel that it got better and the ending was super weird as far as like you're at the ending and you're reading and things are going on and then literally the book just ends like it it just stops and I was like, did, was there supposed to be more chapters that like didn't, didn't get to the publisher in time or like, what happened here? I found that very annoying. I found the whole book very annoying. <laughs> to be fair, I am pretty picky when it comes to thrillers or like suspense because you know, the vast majority of those authors want me to take what they're doing, it, you know, seriously, they want me to look at it realistically. But I it feels to me just, I, I can't do that with so many of the ones that are written. It's very hard for me to take them seriously. Because I see inconsistencies, I see things that don't make sense happening. I'm like, how can I take this seriously if like, it doesn't make sense. So I admit that I'm kind of hard in general on thrillers and suspense novels. If you are not, like, if you can, if you just want to sit back and have a good time and you don't really care, like, it, you just want, you just want a good story and you don't, you don't really care that, like, maybe some inconsistencies don't bother you, you might like this one. I mean, it, it wasn't bad. It, it wasn't a bad book. It just was not enjoyable for me is where I ended up with that. So those are all of the books that I've completely finished so far this month. And now I'm just going to briefly touch on the many books that I am currently in the middle of. So I've got Treasure Island every single time I see this cover. I just love it. I love the shimmery, you know, water. It, they did such a good job in making it look like sunlight coming off of the water. But yeah, Treasure Island, it's a classic story. This is going to be the like the next installment I guess in my in my little classic series that I've been doing and you know what I'm using it as an excuse once I finish this I'm gonna rewatch Muppets Treasure Island too. American Nations this is the nonfiction that I'm currently in the middle of it's by the same author Colin Woodard he is the one that earlier this year I read his nonfiction book about the uh the history of the Caribbean pirates as well so far I'm really enjoying this book. I think it's just interesting when you know you can read a nonfiction and it's talking about real life things and you can you can kind of compare contrast how how your own experience with those things matches up. This is a story about like the different the history and the cultural differences of the different regions within uh, within North America. So it includes not just the US, but it includes uh, Mexico and Canada as well. The author starts this book at basically the first the first landing of Europeans coming into into North America, and then how the different regions started to like culturally culturally evolve. So far it's been really interesting. There's some things that he talks about with the different regions where from my own experience I've I've said yeah you know I totally like I've observed the same things and that's so interesting that this is how it came about. But then there's also some things that he's spoken about where I'm where I've said well that's interesting because it hasn't really been my experience when I've been to those regions you know in North America. And just like with his 
his book on pirates i'm learning some unique different little tidbits so i will have more information about this one when i finally finish it raining men and corpses i'm reading this one on my kindle because it's the book that i've been reading like before i go to bed so here's a little cover um this is the first book in a series to be honest I'm liking it less and less as it goes on, which is saying something because I have a pretty low bar for like for enjoyment for books that I read before I go to bed. Generally, I just want to read something that's like not going to be high stakes, not going to be things that are going to stress me out, right? It's just going to be something that I can like chill and read like right before I fall asleep. My cat is chasing her tail right now. It's adorable. But anyway, this book is annoying me <laughs> the further that I get into it. And I admit that the only reason she's still chasing her tail. All right. The only she's not a dog, I swear. Sometimes she thinks that she is though. The only reason that I haven't like DNF this book is pretty ridiculous, but I'll own it. It's because it takes place in Northern California. And I'm from Northern California so like I'm a sucker for books that take place in Northern California because I feel very you know like uh like Buddy in the movie Elf where he's like I know him I know him that's how I get when there's like books or movies or whatever with Northern California I'm like oh I recognize that oh I'm familiar with what they're talking about okay yeah like I know it's ridiculous and that's like the only reason that I've hung in there it's more of a romance than it is a mystery and I I don't generally read romance like I don't mind incidental romance in the books that I read but when it's like capital R romance or when it's like heavily romance as part of the plot I'm just like not into it I just personally don't feel like I just personally don't find that very interesting and this is definitely like romance first mystery second for what it feels to me. If you love romance, you probably be super into this because it is, it is cozy. It's cute. Like it's it's fine. It's just not really my thing. So yeah, I'm gonna finish it purely to see the references of places and things I'm familiar with in Northern California. River Woman, River Demon. This is another one that I have checked out from the library. So it's like taking priority on my reading list at the moment. So far, I'm not that deep into it, but so far I am enjoying it. Although I'm not really enjoying the main character, but I think that that's intentional. The main character is, she comes across to me as pretty unlikable. And I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure if she's going to be redeemed at some point or if that's going to become part of the story you know where the author is just going to like double down on the unlikability of the main character but i mean it is it is an interesting story so far it's uh you know it's it's like a thriller it's a mystery there's magic involved uh folklore i so so far i think it has a lot of potential i do enjoy the writing style the author is using like uh the prose itself i just i think it has a nice flow it's pretty easy to read so we will see i'm i'm always trying to find a thriller that i like unfortunately it's n it doesn't happen very often but i i do try i'm hoping that this will be a thriller that i can i can say hey i enjoyed this and i can recommend that others read it too then the final books that i am currently reading right now i'm pretty excited about i am almost halfway in the second mistborn book which is also my second brandon sanderson book the well of ascension really enjoying it so far and it takes place about a year after after the first book so we are seeing you know what has what has changed where all of the characters are at because the first book had a pretty a pretty decent amount of of main characters you know that you would be focused on and so it's been interesting to see where everyone is at now what's been happening i'm going to be doing a dedicated video to this book shortly so um keep an eye out for that if you want to see i think going forward what i'm going to do because it's going to become increasingly hard to talk about like what is what does sanderson have in his in his cosmere like 30 books something crazy this man is extremely productive 
there's no way I could make videos about 30 books and not do spoilers because every video I think would be just me saying like I liked this book or I didn't like this book. So I think what I'll probably start doing with the video that I make for this one is to create a video where I give a review and I have a section where I have uh, you know th my thoughts about the book that includes spoilers and then a separate part where I talk about what I thought about the book that does not include spoilers. I did that for the the last video that I did for Queen of Shadows for my Throne of Glass series. I thought that it worked out pretty well. It was a pretty, I liked, I just liked the format of doing it that way. So it's probably similar to what I will do for, you know, for this series going forward as well. And the last book that I'm reading right now is murder your employer the mcmaster's guide to homicide this is the special edition from barnes and noble i have to say i am so glad that i got it uh i think even i i love a map how many times do i have to tell publishers please give me a map i love a map in a book i don't care what the book is about give me a map i find maps very useful this book has been so fun this is the first month a couple of friends and I we've decided to kind of dip our toes in and see if we want to have a little book club. So this is the first book that we're we're reading. Um, we're going to get together by the end of the month and have a chat about it. <laughs> and so far they started reading this before before I did because I, I, I was trying to wrap up some other books before I started this. So they started reading it like last week. They both really loved it. I picked this up a couple of days ago. I have to say it's even better than I thought it would be. <laughs> this has been so fun. It's satire. You know, there's a lot of tongue in cheek. One of the lines in here I think summed it up and I got a I got a cackle out of it. It's a story about a finishing school for finishing people off. <laughs> so it's about this very secret university that teaches you how to be an effective murderer and so it's been it's it's just funny and I don't mean where I'm like you know that that thing where you like smile and you kind of like sharply exhale through your nose because you're like amused where it's not like a laugh but you're like like that you know no I mean like almost every page I'm laughing out loud this book has been so funny the wordplay like this author has, is really witty and I just love it I am very excited to finish this one and talk about it with my friends by the end of the month uh, I think that we really hit a home run with with our first book selection for our little book club. With that, those are all of the books that I'm currently reading. And now I'm going to show a couple of books that I've gotten from my subscription boxes. And I also have an order from The Broken Binding that finally got here that I'm pretty excited about. So the first one, this I, I ended up having to open because the box got a little a little funny in transit. This is a Witch King by Martha Wells. I know this has been like, really anticipated by a lot of people and this so this is the Illumicrate edition they did an awesome job with this and the end paper is here as well and then I mean there is a little a little signature page there's nothing on the back of the book but the front of the book is some uh, some really nice foiling here and on the spine as well so this has been on my list of books that I want to read so I was excited to get this one uh, from Illumicrate for my book of the month, I chose Inkblood Sister Scribe. I was excited to see this one offered because I was going to pick up this book anyway. So I'm pretty pleased that both of the books, both uh, Witch King and this one, it seems like they're both going to be magic heavy, which I love to see magic systems in the fantasies that I read. So I know that this one has also been pretty, pretty highly anticipated. I hope that I really love this one too. All right, I also have my fairy loot package. I think this one might be from May because I feel like this one did not arrive until late. Yes, the little spoiler card indeed confirms that this is the May box from Fairy Loot. Our first item that we have is a book-based tote bag. You don't even know. I have in like my entryway closet, there's like a shelf right at the top, like above where you would hang coats or whatever that shelf I have piled with totes like tote bags and also in the back of my jeep I have a giant stash of tote bags 
I am the tote bag lady. You give, like, show me a really cute tote bag. I'm gonna buy it. Don't even care. Believe it or not, I do, I do find myself using them quite a bit. So they do come in handy. But like, do I necessarily need more tote bags? No, I, I, I have many. No, but like, if it, if it's cute, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna buy it and or use it. And a book-based tote bag. I love a book-based tote bag. So this is, this is going in my closet. All right. I also got a little canvas, ba uh, a little basket here. It's not like firm on the bottom. However, I'm an organization person. I am always looking for like little containers and stuff to organize things in. This will just help me with my organizing compulsion. This is very beautiful, but I have no idea what I would do with it. This is a wooden postcard of Olympus. Very pretty. Don't know what the heck to do with it. Guess I could use it as a bookmark for like a giant book. And then we do have another pin here. This one is actually pretty badass. It's a Valkyrie pin. And the next item is a notebook that's really high quality uh, notebook, actually. I'm extremely impressed. It's inspired by the Elixir of Life. So you can see it's a little shimmery there. Nice. Uh, once again, notebooks are something I have an abundance of because I can't resist a really cool looking notebook. So, I mean, I use notebooks all the time. I will not have a problem using this for something. So, and then finally, the book itself. I haven't actually looked at this copy of it, but I already know what it is. Divine Rivals. I have to say, I think this edition is probably way cooler looking than the one from Owl Crate. You can see the end here. The end pages, I think they did a really nice job on. The outside of this book is beautiful too. If you can see, the light is kind of bright. I've got the, the blinds open, it's just natural light today. It's a beautiful, beautiful day, but it's kind of makes it hard to see, see the foiling on here. It does come signed. Overall, really beautiful edition of this book. I think this one is the superior version between uh, the Fairy Loot and the Owl Crate, because Owl, Owl Crate also came out with uh, the same book, you know, with their own edition. I have to say this one's the best. Honestly, even though I don't read romance, how awesome this one looks makes me want to read this. <laughs> the other version did not. Let me grab it. Hold on. See, like, it's not like this one's ugly, but this one definitely screams more like, I am a romance book. This one to me does not scream romance in my face, even though I know that it is. And it's the same book. Do I judge books by their cover? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I admit it. There, there's books I, I, I judge purely by their cover. Um, I am, I am going to be giving the other one to my friend for sure because she loves romance books. I know she's going to really love this one. Um, honestly though, this edition kind of makes me want to read this too. I guess we'll see. Yeah, they're both really cool. I love beautiful editions of books. And the last, I'm extremely excited about this package. I've been waiting a couple of months to get this one. Can you already guess what it is? Let's open it. All right, the first one, The Priory of the Orange Tree. This is, of course, the special edition from The Broken Binding. Look at that, that edge is absolutely beautiful. The end pages, again, they did an incredible job with this edition. And the outside here, the foiling, just a stunning, stunning book. I am so excited for this one. I do have the, uh, like the regular Barnes and Noble editions. One of my friends wanted to read those this summer. So I might just let him take those and then I will, I will use these fancy ones myself. Let's take a look at the second one. And A Day of Fallen Night. This is the prequel to Priory of the Orange Tree. Again, this is absolutely stunning on the edges and complimentary end pages in this book. And you can really see the difference with the contrasting colors on this one, the blue and the gold, just beautiful, completely beautiful editions of these books. I love it. I really, you hear my cat, she's playing with the wrapping paper, sorry. <laughs> She loves crinkly things, you know, but the Broken Binding does 
really beautiful editions in general of their books. I just bought another one that hopefully will be here in, I don't know, a month. <laughs> Depends on how fast uh, the post office gets their stuff to me from over in the UK. But uh, I for sure I will I will reveal that one as soon as I get it as well. That's all that I've got I think for my mid month update. It's been wild because like I got over being sick right in May. And it just feels like I've been like zero to 100 since then I spent probably a couple of months if you can hear that, my cat's playing with the boxes. Uh, I spent, excuse me, ma'am, since I spent so, spent so long, I was sick. And then, you know, since I've gotten better, I've been going to a bunch of concerts, I'm really enjoying the beautiful weather. I know like I'm, I'm friends with my neighbors on, on each side of my house, luckily. A huge blessing, love them. But when it's, you know, nice weather, we all get together, we hang out, you know, in our backyards. We just enjoy when it's not snowing, right? And it's, it's just, I don't know, I'm, it's not even officially summer yet, I don't think. I think the first day of summer is like, what, June 20th or something like that. And yet I'm already having a pretty good summer. So things are off to a really good start. And I'm hoping that I'm going to have a really good update on my month wrap up where I no longer am in the middle of like six books at a time. That's my hope. That's all that I got for you today. Let me know your thoughts on any of the books that I talked about. If you agree or disagree, if you also plan to pick up any of the books that I got, let me know. I always appreciate you being here. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more content like this. I'll see you next time, thanks.